Hey, this time round, I'll be fixing one of my old friends, my Commodore 64. This was my one from childhood. I don't know what happened to the keyboard. I swear I did not do that. I've got a feeling I've swapped it with another keyboard at some point. But then wires out the side, that's all me. So what happened with this, I plugged in an action replay cartridge and again, used it loads of times, no problem. All of a sudden, one time I've done it, unplugged it, plugged it, well, unplugged it, switched it off, unplugged it, plugged it back in again, just was not working at all. Now, from my memory, I thought I just didn't have any power. So a little quick sip of tea, lovely, because trust me, this is going to be a long one. So, yeah, I don't know what what happened here, but first things first need to get these uh, cables out. I remember why I did this back in the day, just because the uh, multimeter I had at the time, either I just wasn't skillful enough, but I just could not measure the voltages properly, so I put them little leads on there to try and make it a bit easier on myself. Uh, but now, because I was too good, I wrapped them around, then soldered them, so it made it really awkward to get them off, but managed to do it. Just examining the board, making sure I got all the solder off. So first thing here is just powering it up to see what it does. So with them off, clear all the leads out of the way, get the lid back on again. plug it back in so this is the first time I've powered it up since the mid 90s when I originally tried to do this repair so the power brick I know is good because it's the one I use with the other Commodore 64 so yeah got power light coming on so again, this is the reason why I'm uh, wondering what went on there. Now with the lead in, the video lead in. Here we go. As you can see, complete gibberish on the screen. Now, as I say, I don't remember it doing that, but obviously it did. And again, it's one of them things, the more you kind of rack your brains, the more you think, oh, yeah, I kind of do remember now. So this next bit, I kind of, yeah, this is all me. I'd love to say somebody else did this, but unfortunately 1990s me that thought I could repair things, and I could repair things, and I used to do a lot better soldering than what you're about to see. But... Yeah, really, it just shows you, you should really check these boards before you put any power on them, especially if you get them from fresh. Because this could have been a very short video. So, turn this over. See, I still haven't spotted it yet. Oh, now he spotted it. Yeah. Look at that quality soldering. So I must have just used a blowtorch. I've got a feeling it was a particular soldering iron I used to have back in the day. And it was either 17 watt or the 25 watt, but it had like a chisel end on it. And I've clearly just put too much heat on there. So first things first, before I start doing anything, I'm gonna start removing these, um, these chips from here. I don't believe it is the uh, I don't believe it is the memory that is causing the issue here, but ultimately, if I want to have this as a working um, as my main kind of running this Commodore 64, I'm not leaving it like that either because that's just ready to go. There could be dry joints there, joints not even attached. It just looks horrendous as well. But I'm just, yeah, for now, I'm just removing these chips just so they don't get any heat that they don't need, really. And as you can see on this particular board, this is a 1983 revision board. Um, 
So, for some reason, some of them do come fully socketed. This one doesn't. Certain chips have been socketed. Certain chips haven't. From memory, back in the day, just putting a little bit of contact cleaner on there. From memory, back in the day, I've got a feeling I looked it up on an internet website, and we are talking the early days of the internet here, and somebody said, oh, if you have this issue, it could be the memory's gone bad. But, yeah, this is, to me, looking at it now, I believe it's going to be a, a voltage issue of some sort. Um, I don't think it is the memory, but I think it's time to remove them, check them, because again, chances are that memory could be damaged, the amount of heat that they've obviously experienced doesn't hurt either, just uh, I've got a chip tester anyway, so I'll get them out and test them, just removing the VIC-2 there. One of the nice uh, gold pin ones. Surprisingly, the uh, heat compound there wasn't too bad. I was expecting it to be dried on, but that's nah, still pretty good. Well, it was till I wiped it off anyway. Again, another socketed chip here, just removing that. In hindsight, really, I suppose I could have left them on, but... Yeah, just spread a little bit more contact cleaner in there as well. close up just looking at other various solder points don't think I did that but it does seem weird that that looks like that compared to the rest and so maybe I did do it at the time just went over these points but look at that oh juicy nice jump wire there as well yeah it looks pretty hideous thing to try and do got this um, desoldering station so I thought I'd give this a go first time ever using it never used one before so it just seemed a more sensible solution so what it does it heats up the end of the gun and then it's got a little vacuum pump in the uh, desoldering unit so that it will heat the solder press it on there, pull the trigger, oh, vacuums the solder away, leaving a clear, a clear um, oh, solder-free joint, allegedly. So I don't know if you just noticed that, the uh, tip of that, how hot that looks right now. So again, just desoldering away. Now, can you see the shaft of that thing, how red and glowy it looks that's not normal and if you look at the temperature on there I've got it set at 300 it's saying it's 490 and it just kept doing this thing where it was going into an error and yeah you can see see how bad it is so what I decided here was just go back to old methods using a soldering iron and a solder sucker and I also got some solder braid as well just to try and remove it bit of braids just try and get rid of some of that solder out there again the trouble is because this isn't the original solder this is soldering that I've done 
the amount of solder on both sides of that chip is horrendous so even though I'm getting it off the back there it's still just seeping through to the front and uh, causing an issue keeping them to stay on Lots and lots of solder to come off. Again, a little bit of braid action going on. Try and get that away. So yeah, I bought this as well, a chip puller. Which again is quite handy. You can see there, I've managed to pull up one side of the chip, but the other side still fixed down. So look, you can see certain pins are still just holding fast on that other side. Obviously this side's all up, but yeah, that side still needs to come off. So yeah, now I'm just working it on the top. Try and get it out. And with a little bit of coaxing. a lot of coaxing there it comes oh, one out two to go that's the new gun I've got there so this gun is actually the, the working version of what I should have had originally So yeah, again, just using this solder gun to try and alleviate these ones. And again, when it comes to stuff like this, patience, it really is a virtue. It's like certain things you just can't rush, and this is one of them where if you're not careful, go too quickly, you can easily just rip out points or whatever. I mean, you'll, as you'll see later on, it wouldn't really cause too much concern with this one, but again, it could have caused more damage. I think the damage was already done, though, back in the mid-1990s by myself, when it comes to these chips. Again, I still don't know why the uh, cartridge caused that problem. I mean, it wasn't like I removed it when the computer was on. I don't know, you know, maybe the power supply just happened to fail at that exact moment. But yeah, it just, for whatever reason, it just glitched and yeah, it just took this, uh, took my old Commodore 64 with it. And it's such a shame because, as I say, I, this is my childhood right here, this computer. I got it back in 1984. Um, yeah, and I was, uh, I can't remember the pack now, it was like a Christmas pack. And uh, I just remember the tape that come with it had a, uh, had a thing on it that said, uh, when you loaded it up, the first song it played, it said, turn up to full volume. So of course, being a kid, what do you do? Turn it up full volume, and of course it just absolutely blasted some Christmas carol out. Which my uh, dad was less than impressed with, but... It was funny. The other thing we had with this uh, with this Commodore at the time, and again, I'm so glad I got a Commodore. The TV we had was a um, I can't remember. It was just some old make, but we didn't know how to tune the TV. The no, you normally you got like uh, tuning knobs on the front of them back in them days. This one couldn't find them anywhere. 
and um, luckily enough, you, there's a little tuning um, screw at the back. So, looking at this now, I've decided I'm going to go, because there's just so much solder on here, it's time to bring out the big guns. So this, this device here basically just blows hot air down the nozzle. You see it for a lot of people when they do Xbox 360 fixes and stuff like that. Just, just basically heats up everything, so it's just blowing hot air. I mean, really, I suppose it is technically a hot air gun, but you can see just the nozzle's a little bit smaller, so you can concentrate the heat on one location rather than, like, if you just get, like, a general purpose heat gun, it will just blast heat everywhere. With this one, I can concentrate on one particular area. So, yeah, just working over the solder. Bearing in mind there's hardly any solder on here now. I've, I've reduced it quite an amount, but even still. Again, there we go. It's got that one off. It is surprising at how well they hold on. So there again, I'm just blowing it up in the air because I don't want it, I don't act when you're just randomly holding that gun it doesn't switch off it just keeps on blowing out hot air there isn't a trigger or anything on it so you just got to be very careful where you point it when you're not using it to release a chip so that's all three memory chips off now yep some isopropyl alcohol to clean that off and you can see it looks pretty good we'll do a couple of close ups in a minute just going to do the same to the top of it yeah, so just clean it up and then we can assess the damage just cleaning out the holes as well there so as you can see we've got rip traces this side isn't too bad actually it was the other side that seems to have got a lot worse A big zoom in on that. Oh, look, another big zoom in on it. Ah, oh, yeah, look. There's a little trace just kind of gonna cause some problems there if that's not addressed. I'll just get the screwdriver here. And you can see that's a really small point screwdriver head, but that's it. Just trying to break it off here just so it's a nice clean cut. It's not gonna short out against anything else. it got it so then I just gotta carefully brush it away don't really want it to sit in there anywhere Let me just pick it up with my finger okay so now we can see the true extent of the devastation caused by my mid 90s self here though look at that so luckily enough a lot of these don't actually go anywhere like a lot of them are just literally single points yeah I belled this one out as well just to make sure that trace wasn't touching any of the other things that it didn't need to yeah you can see how horrendous it is there just yeah the points completely missing then pads completely gone
Yeah, it's not ideal at all. As I say, I've got this memory checker, so now I've got the memory out. Next thing is to actually test it to see whether it's worth putting it back in again. All the lights gone green, excellent. So I've sped this up. It takes roughly about a minute a test. So again, some pictures of the actual devastation of the board. See, it doesn't look good at all. So the next thing I did was try and get a hold of some schematics of these board and um, just actual, uh, so funnily enough, PCB way who I'm not sponsored by, but um, what was quite handy is someone's obviously uploaded a, a an equivalent board on there. So between that and another website, I was able to kind of work out where the traces originally were supposed to go. So that's it. DIYchris.com was one of them I used. And again, then I could clearly see what I needed to do, where the traces were missing. So here I just got like a little bit of jump wire. Originally I tried to do it on the top, like try to do the traces that were missing on the top on the top but uh, soon realized that just wasn't going to happen and also it's just going to look ugly so i thought do all the missing traces on the bottom and what i've done i've used the black cable to represent all the traces that are missing from the top and then used a yellow cable to represent all the traces that were missing on the bottom just that way i can differentiate against them was quite handy because this wire is quite small I was able to you can literally pull the insulation off with the end of your finger but of course when you go to tin the end of the cable uh, the um, the insulation does kind of like roll up a little bit so now I've just just checking to make sure what I've done is actually making a connection just put it on continuity and yeah it seems to be working fine continuity and again also just making sure I'm not getting continuity with other things that it shouldn't be having continuity with as well so again just checking again checking on the top of the chips this time up picture some of the connections and there you can see another one missing so again here I'm just going over the other terminals making sure so what I've done rather than just uh, put the uh, chips straight in again I've actually put them in a little socket so I'm, I'm just soldering in some IC sockets here for the memory so that way, again, if I've got any problems with them in the future, they're easier to remove. I haven't got to apply any heat to them. And again, just using um, the, the pictures that we saw earlier on my phone, so that I can clearly see where the connections should be made, where it shouldn't be made. Again, check in continuity. Yeah, at this point, now the test, I think the battery was too low and it just wasn't quite working right. So I wasn't sure whether I was getting correct continuity or not. So swapped over testers at this point. Yeah. 
Yeah, again, just testing for everything. Just having a look. And again, just marking off the chips that I've done in green there. So I've put a tick next to that one, so I know that one's good. Go on to the next one. good so again before I'm soldering it, I'm just checking it on that on that layout there just to see if I have got yeah so when I'm checking out I'm just checking the back side of the ball just to make sure that I've uh, I'm going to the right place or not Make sure I'm not missing any uh, links or anything. So again, just checking the continuity there. I mean, this is all sped up, but yeah, it does take a time. Again on the front, just checking to make sure everything's connected the way it should be connected. So again, what's quite handy with the memory here is a lot of it is the chip's pretty much what you get on, say, leg number four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve will be the same across. So you should have a continuity between all of it. I believe it's only uh, something like. Pin to off this off the top of my head. I think it's pin two and pin fourteen are linked underneath and um, on each chip, so those ones won't have a continuity through. But a lot of them are just straight across. So again, I think that is all the top ones. Yeah, and then the yellow ones are the for the bottom traces that are missing. So as I say, you can see that I'm just checking across. Now what's interesting is that particular one there is going to come back to haunt me. Remember there was that link wire in there? Um, this is what's weird. So I've, I've removed the chip now because I'm like, I'm not getting a continuity between, what pin would it be? 8, 9, 10, I think it's pin 11. Pin 11 should be the same across all of them. On that middle one, I'm not getting it. But when I take the chip out, I am getting it, which is really odd. So, again, this is going to come back to haunt me later on. But for now, I'm getting continuity. Everything's good. So, put that chip back in. And like I say, in this particular video, I'm going to probably end it around here on this one. Right now, I just wanted to tidy up that memory. I don't think this is going to fix the problem. However, you never know. So, I'm going to give it one more test just to make sure. Again, just testing across the chips right now. But, yeah, I'm just going to put some power on it and see what we've got. But, yeah, just some final checks. go put the power on again for now I'm just gonna put this on quickly just to see if I'm getting a power light coming up make sure I haven't shorted out anything that critically yes I'm getting power so take this back off again and now the moment of truth what does it do
See, still got the same issue. But next one, we're going to address this. For now, I'm happy. I've got my memory back in the way it is. Now I just need to find out what's causing this issue. As I say, for me, it looks like a voltage problem. <laughs> 